Oh, Mr. Marston. How are you doing today? I'm well, Miss McFarland. Thank you. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Thank you. So, uh, how are your ribs? Fine. A little sore, but apart from a couple extra scars, it'll be as nothing happened. Good. Uh, come in, come in. You know, you never did tell me how you met that Bill Williamson or what you wanted from him. No, miss, I did not. Well, why not, if you don't mind me asking? I certainly don't mind you asking if you don't mind me not telling. See, it's a complicated and somewhat pathetic tale, and by telling you, not only would I be putting your life in danger, but also threatening the lives of some people that I hold very dear. Well, I apologize if I seem to be prying. And I apologize for my reticence. Hope you believe me when I say that it's simply out of respect for you. Of course, Mr. Marston. I understand that a city dweller such as yourself likes to have some exotic secrets so us country folk are impressed. <laughs> I'm no city man, miss. Yeah, but I saw you get on the train at Blackwater. You with those gentlemen in bowler hats? I'm still no city man. But I'll bet you can't ride, Mr. Marston. I hate to take money from a lady, miss. <laughs> oh, you won't be. I'll race you right now. If it makes you happy. We'll see. All right, I'll show you how we ride around these parts. Hello? Let's go! On the count of three. Three, two, one, go! I trust you're not gonna be a gentleman about this! You don't know me at all, Miss McFarland! Come on! Why don't I lead the way? How you doing back there? Let's go! I bet you're starting to regret your brave words, Miss McFarland! Come on! Would you like me to slow down? Should I wait for you to catch up? Come on! Are you saving the best for last? It was fun. Sure. You know, you should go pay the marshal a visit in Armadillo sometime. I'm sure he could help you deal with that nice Mr. Williamson. 
Yeah, I might just do that, Miss McFarland. You do whatever you think best, Mr. Marston. Mr. Marston, how are you? Good, Miss McFarland. How are you? I'm well. Would you mind riding with me to Armadillo? I've got to get some supplies and I could do with the company. Of course. You can take the reins. It wouldn't do for a terrifying bounty hunter such as yourself to be seen driven around by a woman. <laughs> Hop on up, Mr. Marston. Looking much better, considering you were almost buzzard food a couple days ago. I have you to thank for that, miss. So do tell me, have you needlessly risked your life since we last spoke? No, miss, I have not. Well, that's a relief. Perhaps there's hope for you yet. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, there's always hope, Mr. Marston. You can't be a rancher in this kind of country if you don't believe that. An admirable attitude, miss. I suppose so. I can't think of any other way to stay sane, to be frank. What about you? Have you ever given up hope altogether? Hope hasn't really entered into it. It's not really something I think about. A peculiar outlook. I can't really say I understand you. I can't always say I do either. Oh, don't be so deliberately enigmatic. I'm not, miss. Yes, you are. You are being deliberately obscure as a substitute for having a personality. I just know there are two theories to arguing with women. And neither one works. I'm not even going to dignify that gibberish with a response. I think it's kind of funny I found you dying on the side of the road and now you're driving me into town. You have a strange sense of humor. Well, you must admit. It's an unusual start to a friendship. I didn't realize we were friends, Miss McFarland. Oh, please. Now who's being funny? Listen, I know that business with Williamson is your business, but I don't know. You've been good to us, and I don't think you're a bad man. A little stupid, perhaps, but not rotten. I just worry about you gallivanting around these parts like you're some kind of deranged bounty hunter. Like Paul always says, don't go waking snakes. I appreciate your concern for us lesser mortals, Miss McFarland. I really do. And if there was any other way out, I'd take it. I can assure you of that. Howdy. You never did tell me where you live. I have a small holding up in Great Plains. A farmer? Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. And at what point during your day of hunting down outlaws do you find time to raise chickens? Only been at it three years or so. I guess I'm kind of new to it. You're telling me? So who's looking after this farm of yours right now? Uncle. Well, he's not my uncle, as far as I know. Just an old dog who's as lazy as a lizard on a hot day. The kind of fella laboring under the delusion that age brings uh, wisdom. Sounds like the perfect person to leave in charge of your entire livelihood. We go way back. And I didn't have a lot of choice. I'd be getting back there if I was you. That's what I'm trying to do, miss. How well do you know New Austin? I don't. We talked about coming down here many times, but never made it. Who's we? Me and the folks I used to, used to work with. Yeah, New Austin. The last real outlaw country. Where the old ways still hold true. You do a man wrong, he'll shoot you for it. You do a man right? Well, he still may shoot you for it. But at least you have an idea of what's right and what's wrong there. Dear, oh dear, Mr. Marston. What dreadful novel did you get that romanticized drivel out of? Those days are long gone if they were ever here at all. According to Paul, those days were just people shooting each other because they lost the cards. We'll be lucky if our ranch survives another five years. 
businessmen are the new cowboys. You look like a man who's been through the mill. Uh, thank you. I mean, you've lived some life. I'm 27 years old and I have rarely left Hennigan's stead. Although many years ago we did briefly employ a French governess. Well, I think she was French. She said she was French, but she spoke Russian. That was when Paul thought I would become a lady. A change of pasture doesn't always make for a fatter calf. I know, and I wouldn't change my life for all the money in the world. I'm just saying, sometimes I wish I'd been, well, braver. Been to more places, seen more things. If you ask me, it usually takes more strength to stay than to run, Miss McFarland. Sure is a pleasant journey. It used to be such a nice town before that gang started helling around the place, causing all that trouble, shaking down the local merchants, kidnapping, and worse. That's what I heard. It's a terrible shame if you ask me, and there's not a man with the gravel in his gizzard to stand up to them. What about the marshal? Well, he's doing what he can with what he's been given, I suppose. So this is Armadillo. Manhattan it is not, but it does okay for us. Most important thing for you right now is getting yourself into Dr. Johnson's office to purchase some medicine. First one's on me. Thank you, miss. I'll pay you back. I'm sure you shall. The doc's a good fellow. He saved your life, so be polite to him. Meet me in front of the general store when you're done. Some good tonics if you need them. I hope that helps. That was a hell of a storm last month. Hell of a storm. Well, look at you. Be well. Come by any time. Howdy. Good evening, partner. Hello there. Well, thanks for driving me. It was nice to be able to enjoy the view for once. And a little company never hurts now and again. You're more than welcome, miss. Least I can do. Thank you for the medicine. Why don't you have a look around Armadillo? You can always take a stagecoach back to the ranch later. I might just do that. Travel safely, miss. Try not to get yourself shot. I won't be around to save you this time. Hi there, ma'am. 